In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a risk-free position with options. So oftentimes when we think of buying a call option or buying a put option or writing a call option, writing a put option, we think of inherently risky positions. So we invest a little bit and can get a big payoff or for writing, we can get a small payoff, but we take a large amount of risk to do that. We saw with some spread positions, such as a vertical bull spread or vertical bear spread, that we could actually reduce our risk using options. This is kind of an extreme case in which we're going to create a risk-free position with options. So in this situation, we're going to buy 100 shares of Lululemon. And for this example, we're going to assume it's trading for $237.62. At the same time, we're going to buy a June 240 put contract for $20.85. And we're going to write a June 240 call for $20.70. Now remember, call option contracts and put option contracts are valid for 100 options per contract. So we're doing 100 shares of the stock. We're buying 100 put options and we're writing 100 call options. Now it's important that the call and put options both have the same expiration. So we're dealing with June contracts on both of these and they both have the same strike price. In this case, it's gonna be 240 for both of these. Now if I wanted to, I could use 235s or I could use 245s. It doesn't matter what the strike price I use as long as they're identical and as long as the expiration date is the same. So let's look at what it costs me to establish the position. I buy 100 shares of the stock, so that's going to be an outflow. We make that negative. 100 times 237, 62 is going to give me negative $23,762 to buy the stock. Then I'm going to buy 240 put contract. So again, the contract is 100 options per contract. I'm buying it, so it's a cash outflow. And that contract is going to cost me $20.85, which is a negative outflow of $2,085. And then the last part of this position is I am going to write a contract since I'm writing that, that's going to be an inflow. So I'm going to receive that. One contract is for 100 options, and each individual option is $20.70. So that is going to be an inflow of $2,070. That is going to give me a total value of my position of 23,762 out minus 2,085 plus 2,070. So my net cash flow is gonna be a cash outflow of $23,777 when I establish this position. So let me go ahead and put that in my initial cash flow. It's going to be the same regardless of what the price closes at. So I can put that in for each of these outcomes. And then I go over here and now look at what happens at expiration. So this was initially up front. And now we fast forward to expiration date. What is the put? Now, remember, I purchased or I purchased the put, so I own that. This gives me the right to sell a $200 stock for $240. So that's worth $40 per share. Again, I own 100 options on that. So that's going to give me a net value of $4,000. If instead of closing at $200 at expiration, when we get to the third Friday in June, the stock closes at 220, that's only going to be worth $20 because now I can sell a $220 stock for 240. That's $20 a piece times 
the 100 options, so that gives me 2,000. If the stock closes at 240, there's no net benefit or loss to that. There's no advantage to being able to sell $240 stock for 240. So I'm just going to put that in as zero. Remember, an option is the right, but not the obligation. So I could sell a $260 stock for 240, but why would I want to? I could sell it for 260 without the option. I don't have the obligation to use the option, so I'm gonna let that expire worthless. Same thing if the stock is at 280. Now let's look at the value of the call. Remember the call gives the right, but not the obligation to buy the stock. So the stock is trading for 200. I sold somebody the right to pay me 240 for it. They don't want to do that. Why would they pay me $240 if they can buy it on the open market without the option for 200? Therefore, they're going to let that option expire worthless. Same thing at 220. There's no value to being able to pay $240 for something they can buy without the option for 220. Again, same thing at 240. There's no advantage to being able to pay 240 when they can buy it without the option for 240. However, once the stock gets above 240, now there's an option an advantage to using the option. If the stock closes at 260, then they can pay me 240 to buy the stock. They can turn around and sell it for 260. They're gonna make $20. Now, since I wrote that, I owe that to somebody. So it's a negative value of $2,000. At 280, they now have the right to pay me 240 they can sell it for 280. That effectively is costing me $4,000. Now let's look at the value of the stock. Because remember, I purchased 100 shares of the stock, so I still own that stock. If it closes at $200, it's worth $20,000. If it closes at $220, that's worth $22,000 closes at $240, that's worth $24,000. If it closes at $260, it's worth $26,000. And if it closes at $280, it's worth $28,000. So now I just add these three up. I own the put, I owe the call, and I own the stock. Since I add those up, that's 24,000 value of net position at expiration. I originally paid 23,777. So that gives me a profit of $223. How about if the stock goes to 220? My put is worth 2,000. I don't owe anything on the call. The stock is worth 22,000. I add those up. It's worth $24,000, giving me a profit of $223. The stock closes at $240. My put is worth nothing. The call I wrote is worth nothing. The stock I own is worth $24,000. Again, add those up, $24,000 for a net profit of $223. $260, my put's not worth anything and I owe 2000 for the call that I wrote, but now my stock's worth 26, add those up, it's still worth 24,000, 223 profit. At 280, same process again, value of my position, 24,000, net profit, 223. What you can see is you can plug in any stock price at expiration, and you're gonna get the same thing. The value of the net position at expiration is 24,000. I get a net profit of $223. Now note, the value of the net position at expiration is, uh, is 24,000. Let's look at my put and my call. Notice those are 240 strike. Remember a call option contract or a put option contract is for 100 shares, so 240 times 100 is 24,000. 
the value of the net position at expiration. I guarantee myself a net profit, but remember, in order to get that profit, I had to wait until the option expired, and I had to invest quite a bit up front. So this isn't just like free money that pops out of nowhere. It's kind of like a risk-free rate of return. I invest a certain amount up front, I wait a certain time period, and I guarantee myself a certain rate of return. So if I'm able to get a risk-free rate of return, I should earn the risk-free rate on that. Now, while theoretically there is no truly 100% risk-free rate of return, Normally, we can think of treasury bills being a pretty good approximation. So that's often what we use as our substitute for the risk-free rate. Now, if you remember back from the Black-Scholes option pricing model, we said the value of the put is equal to the value of the call plus the present value of the exercise price minus the stock price. Now, if we do a little math here, we can rewrite this equation. Let's add P0 to both sides, subtract value of the call from both sides, and what we get is the price of the stock plus the value of the put minus the value of the call equals the present value of the exercise price. Now jump back up here to what we did. We bought the stock, so that's our P0. We bought the put, that's the value of the put, and we wrote the call. So buy the stock, buy the put, write the call, and we lock in the exercise price, but we have to wait for that. So the value we pay up front should equal the present value of the exercise price discounted back at the risk-free rate of return. This is why call and put prices are locked together. It doesn't really matter whether we think the stock price is going to go up or go down, the value of the call and the value of the put isn't based on how likely we think the stock price is to go up or how likely the stock price is to go down. Instead, it's based on factors of the stock, such as standard deviation, time, those factors from the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And that's because we can use this combination of puts, calls, and the underlying stock to lock in a risk-free rate. If the value of the call was overpriced, we'd be able to earn more than a risk-free rate. If the value of the put was overpriced, we'd be able to earn more than the risk-free rate. So this kind of locks in the call and the put price, and that's why it's referred to as put-call parity and creates that relationship.